Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the launch of our Armed Forces Veterans Hub. It is great to see you all here. My name is Shay Scott, and I'm a station manager at Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Service. Before my role here, I joined the Royal Air Force at the age of 16 and was there for about 10 years working in the Royal Air Force Mountain Rescue Team based in Irish Valley. Since joining Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Service, I've been involved in strengthening the service's commitment to the Armed Forces through the Armed Forces Covenant culminating in the service receiving the Gold Award in August this year. The Armed Forces Covenant is a pledge that together we acknowledge and understand that those who serve or who have served in the Armed Forces and their families should be treated with fairness and respect in the communities, economy and society they serve with their lives. I've worked with people from across the organisation as well as partners from other Blue Light Services and Armed Forces partners to make sure they provide opportunities and support for all those who have served their country. Today, we are delighted to be hosting the first Armed Forces Veterans Hub in rural Berkshire, which we hope will support those in our communities who have served in Her Majesty's Armed Forces, and we hope that this hub will provide a space in which veterans can listen to guest speakers, access support, and have a chat to others who have served in the Armed Forces. We had hoped to hold these meetings in person, but unfortunately, as with many events at the moment, current restrictions mean that for the meantime, the safest option is to hold them virtually. We'll be bringing in a range of guest speakers who will be able to talk about their organisations or their experience as a veteran, and there will be opportunities to talk to other veterans and hopefully, when we can, all meet in person. I'd first like to run through some housekeeping and then I'll run through the agenda for today's meeting. We're hoping that we can run this meeting with everyone's cameras on, but we may need to turn them on depending on connectivity. Please ensure you position your device to ensure the camera is positioned to have a clear front on view of your face. This is essential to ensure other participants and viewers have a clear image of those that are participating in the meeting. There will be opportunities during the meeting to ask questions. If you have any, you can either use the chat function and we'll need and we'll read out your question or you can raise your hand. We will then read out your name to enable you to ask your question. We'll also be recording this meeting for distribution to your respective organisations, press and on social media. Hopefully we've all, you've all returned your consent forms, but if you do not wish to be filmed, please let our communication engagement team know by emailing communications at rbfros.co.uk. So, on to the agenda for today's meeting. First off, we'll hear from Councillor Colin Dudley, Chairman of Royal Berkshire Fire Authority. He will talk about the Fire Authority's commitment to the initiative and armed forces community. Next, we'll hear from James Sunderland, MP for Bracknell, who has kindly joined us today and agreed to speak about his commitment to the armed forces after having served 26 years up until his selection as MP last year. We're also very privileged to have Colonel Bob Stewart, MP for Beckenham and a former officer in the British Army joining us, who has kindly agreed to talk, talk, to, talk to us today. We'll also be hearing from Councillor Angus Frost, the Armed Forces Champion for Royal Berkshire Fire Authority, who has previously served in the Royal Air Force. We have a number of organisations who have also kindly joined us here today, who, who all have many different things they can offer to support members of our Armed Forces. We'll be hearing from some of those organisations today to find out what we can all take away from one, one another to support the veterans within our communities. Organisations such as Building Heroes, Career Transition Partnership, Forces Online, Reserve Forces and Cadets Association, Royal British Legion, Royal Hospital Chelsea, Surrey Fire and Rescue Service, SAFA, and the Veterans Mental Health Transition, Intervention and Liaison Service. There will also be the opportunity to ask any questions you may have about this initiative, so we'll open up the meeting for those who wish to speak. After we've heard from all the organisations who wish to speak, our Chief Fire Officer, Trevor Ferguson, will say a few words to close the meeting. Once again, thank you all very much for joining us today, and I hope to work with you all more closely as the initiative progresses. I'd now like to hand over to our Chairman, Councillor Colin Dudley, to begin today's meeting. Okay, thank you very much, Shay. Um, 
My name is Councillor Colin Dudley. I'm the chairman of Royal Berkshire Fire Authority. Um, I'd like to begin by extending my thanks to everyone who's joined us here today, and especially to James Sunderland and his office for ongoing support he's provided for us in our efforts to support both this initiative and the service since he became the Member of Parliament for Bracknell. I'd also like to thank Colonel Bob Stewart, who's joined us here today for his time and his ongoing support. Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Service and Royal Berkshire Fire Authority are fully committed to making sure the service is accessible to all. We value everyone, regardless of their background, and recognise that diversity makes us stronger. We are all one team and we're working to make sure that our service represents every part of our community. The work we're doing here today forms just one part of our journey with equality, diversity and inclusion. And we're continuing to work to enrich our service for the benefit of the communities we serve. Having people from all walks of life brings a fresh perspective and we recognize the value that this holds. Now, as a fire authority, we recognise the importance of supporting our armed forces community. At Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Service, there are currently over 30 members of our team who are either veterans or are still serving in the armed forces. For example, we have a firefighter at Slough Fire Station who previously was a paramedic in the army for 14 years. This is how demanding my job is all the time. Reservists who are firefighters and in Thames Valley Fire Contr Control Service, we have a member of our IT team here today who served in the Royal Artillery. And one of our own councillors, who you will hear from later, Councillor Ross, who served as a pilot in the Royal Air Force. Now, having members of our teams across a wide range of roles in the service brings a whole new skill set to the organisation, enabling us to learn from their past careers and bring a new, a new approach to our ways of working. A previous career in the armed forces lends itself well to working in the emergency services, but we believe that any organisation can benefit from the experience veterans bring. Throughout the last few years, we've worked on new ways to show our support and demonstrate the benefits of supporting the armed forces, not just to the veterans themselves, but also to the organisations that show this support including signing the Armed Forces Covenant in 2018, before proudly receiving the Gold Award in August. However, our commitment to our veterans and serving members of the Armed Forces extends way beyond this award. We look forward to building upon our existing relationships with the Armed Forces in the coming years, and we're continuing to find ways to demonstrate our support. One of these includes hosting this, the Armed Forces Veterans Hub. Now, the Armed Forces Veterans Hub is a really exciting initiative that today is being launched in Royal Berkshire and will provide a place for members of the Armed Forces community to meet and access support and advice from all of the organisations that are here today. I sincerely hope that in the not too distant future, we'll be able to meet in person of course, in line with COVID guidelines. But given the importance of this event and, of course, the significance of this weekend, we felt it was important to proceed with this event virtually. However, as soon as we can, we will hold live Veterans Hub meetings at our fire stations across our great Royal County of Berkshire and align this Veterans Hub initiative to one of our fire authorities' key initiatives which is to make our fire stations at the very heart of the communities that they serve. Now, of course, tomorrow is Remembrance Sunday, and it's no coincidence that we've chosen today to hold this meeting. Although the current COVID-19 restrictions meant that we're not able to celebrate with our communities in the usual way, as a service, our teams will be marking the occasion on station by flying remembrance flags at full mast and observing two minutes silence outside their stations in remembrance of our fallen heroes. 
Large poppies have also been sent to all fire stations to put on the front of their fire engines to display our support. And we've also had some pictures of poppies drawn by local children, uh, which are displayed on the windows of our new community fire station. Um, I think you're seeing a picture of it now on screen. I think it's an absolutely fantastic display that the children have sent us these photos. Oh, sorry, these pictures that they coloured in themselves. Now, whilst we recognise that our commitment needs to extend beyond Remembrance Sunday, we wanted to launch this event at a time when we can all reflect on the selfless actions of those who serve or has served in our armed forces. So on behalf of myself and my fellow councillors on Royal Berkshire Fire Authority, I'd like to again thank you all for joining us here today. And I hope that this will be the start of an excellent initiative that will make a real difference to the lives of veterans across Royal Berkshire. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd now like to hand over to Mr. James Sunderland, the Member of Parliament for Bracknell, who would like to say a few words. Good afternoon, team. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, yep. I'm so sorry. I've just moved house and uh, the broadband is not sufficient yet in the new house to pick up video. So I'm on my mobile phone and hopefully you can hear me. I just want to say a massive congratulations to everyone in Berkshire, particularly in Crowthorne, and my massive thanks to the Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Service for what you've done so far. Um, the opening of this hub is absolutely amazing, and I'm proud to be associated with it as the MP. Um, I think the veterans have got a really important place in our country today. 2.2 million veterans, plus their friends and their families and their loved ones. And of course, on this important weekend, it's really, really important that we, we mark them, celebrate them, and of course, those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. So can I please commend you from a distance for what's happened? with the hub and to say thank you to everybody involved. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sunderland. I'm going to now ask Colonel uh, Bob Stewart, uh, Member of Parliament for Begum, to uh, say a few words, please. Well, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Can I start with a poem? There are many kinds of sorrow in this world of love and hate. But there is no keener sorrow than a soldier's for his mate. Those are the words of Padre Geoffrey Studdard Kennedy, MC, called Woodbine Willie in 1918, a wonderful priest operating in the front lines. They're particularly apposite for me in this Remembrance Week. I always think back to one night, Monday the 6th of December 1982 which was the most traumatic night of my life. And for the first time today, I will talk about what happened completely during that evening. At 11 o'clock in the evening, a massive bomb went off. I lived in my officer's quarter about half a mile from the barracks at Bally Kelly in Northern Ireland. And I was the officer commanding A Company of the 1st Cheshires. That evening, earlier, I played squash with my clerk, Clinton Collins. I'd driven him home afterwards. I promoted him to Lance Corporal that day. And he was going out with his wife, Tina, to celebrate. And they were going to a discotheque, which was near the barracks, called the Drop-In Well. Now, we were in a white area at the time, judge safe. And so there was no problem with that. I drove home. Three hours later, the explosion came. I was the duty field officer. I was a major. I rang the guard room and was immediately informed that it was likely to be the drop in well. I jumped in my car and was there within a minute. As I got out by the street lights, I saw the drop-in well wrecked. I went into the ruined building with a torch. I scrambled over the wrecked masonry. Suddenly it struck me. 
the soldiers in the discotheque would be mostly from A Company, my company. We were the only rifle company in camp. I felt honestly a rising dread and great fear. Immediately in front of me by a broken down fence, I recognized Mark Young, aged 18, propped up against the fence and holding his stomach. He was in terrible pain, but he was alive and his stomach was huge. I didn't know what it was. All I did as I knelt beside him was telling me he was going to live. Actually, in the event, his back was broken and he never walked again. I couldn't do anything for him, so I went into the wreck building further. Then a torch, my torch, showed a girl on the ground. She was in a terrible state. Both legs and an arm were mutilated by the bomb. Blood was gushing out. And I spoke to her. I said to her, are you all right, darling? She said, I think so. I said, are you in pain? She said, no, not really. What's happened? And I said, well, there's been a bomb. And she said, am I hurt? And I said, yes, you are. You're hurt really quite badly. And she said, how badly hurt am I? And I said, goodness me, why did I? I said, yeah, you're really badly hurt. And she said, am I going to die? And I said, yes, I think you are. And she said to me, will you hold me? So I held her as she died. She died within a minute. I was in a terrible state. She died in a state of grace. I was numb with shock. I couldn't do anything more. Then a soldier of mine, Private Harthen, I remember, shouted out. He said, sir, Clinton Collins is here. And he pulled me over and pointed a light through a gap in the masonry. And there, underneath about three feet concrete, was Clinton Collins and his wife, Tina, buried in the masonry. I spoke to Tina. I said to her, are you all right, Tina? And she said, I'm all right, sir. And I remember saying to her, you don't need to call me sir. You know, we're not, you know, this is it's irrelevant. We were in a, and she said, um, I, <laughs> Clinton's beside me. I said, I couldn't see him. He's not moving. I said, oh. And she said, I think he's gone. It took us four hours to get Tina out of that masonry. Of course, Clinton was dead. Then there were another four soldiers and drum major Cooper was talking to them through again through rubble they'd been at a table drinking i suppose when the bomb had gone off and they'd gone down like a pack of cards rather like you know one after the other they were lance corporal stephen bagshaw private philip mcdonough lance corporal david stitt and lance corporal billy bell as the drum major talk to them and I left him there because I had I was the incident commander as the senior officer I left him there as Lance, as the drum major talked to them Stephen Bagshaw David Stitt and Philip McDonough died the race was to get Billy Bell out it took all the rest of the night the problem was doctors turned up and he said his legs are trapped and they're broken and as anyone who apparently is a medic will tell you, you've got to get broken legs out within four hours or something um, to stop gangrene. <laughs> it was almost impossible. We At one stage, I said to um, Billy Bell, we're going to have to crush, cut your legs off, Corporal Bell. And he came back with the answer, typical squaddy answer. 
he said one hell of a way to get out of the Pearson Trophy, which was the annual, which was the weekly run we had. No legs, sir, eh? And I thought, my God, what sort of courage do these people have? By five o'clock in the morning, we pulled out everyone that was alive. Some of the dead were left there. I followed the ambulance that took Billy Bell to Otten Galvin Hospital in Londonderry. Bell's legs were amputated 14 months later after he'd suffered 14 months of bloody agony. And they were trying to save them, but it was agonizing for him. When I was at the hospital at about five o'clock in the morning, I went to see Tina Collins. She was lying in a bed in a ward. I spoke to her and I said, you know what I'm going to say, Tina? She said she did. I said, I'm so sorry, but Clinton's dead. She said, I know, I know he's dead. She was incredibly brave and calm. I drove home in my car. I was filthy. I was covered in blood and dirt. I just took my clothes off. And I jumped in the bath and wept like a baby. Altogether, 17 people were killed, four, four girls. Six of them were from A Company, 1st Cheshire's, my own soldiers. 35 of my company were wounded. This drop-in well bomb had huge impact on me, and it's, I'm haunted by it. Later that morning, and it took me four hours in the North morgue to identify bodies, I identified the remains of Stephen Bagshaw, Clinton Collins, Philip McDonough, David Stitt, Stephen Smith, and Shaw Williamson in the Art Galvin morgue. They'd been with me on operations for over 12 months in Northern Ireland, so I knew them pretty well as soldiers and, of course, friends. For a rifle company of about 115 people, I had a 5% death rate. 5% of my company were killed that night and 30% were wounded. Nothing in my life had prepared me for the drop-in world bomb. What occurred then will be with me until I die. So I remember this week, the 1,441 soldiers who were killed in Northern Ireland. That's more than 50% more than died in the Falkland Islands, Bosnia, Iraq, and Afghanistan put together. And we've forgotten, largely, the veterans from Northern Ireland, and particularly those that actually were severely injured, like William Bell and Mark Young, who was a paraplegic for the rest of his life, and Billy Bell, who, of course, still has no legs. So, ladies and gentlemen, can I thank you for what you're doing for veterans, both men and women veterans? At least three women have been killed on operations in the British service in uniform. I had the honour to command in 1982, not just soldiers, but I was responsible for military wives like Tina Collins, who was widowed at 18 that night. I'm very pleased to join you today. I'm very pleased to be here because James asked me to be here, a good friend of mine. In fact, I'm largely responsible for him trying to be an MP. And I thank you all for what you've done to set up a veterans hub, which I'm sure will be used by people like ex Lance Corporal Billy Bell, and indeed wives and women who are connected to the service. God bless you all and thank you. That's me. Colonel Bokstra, thank you very much for your time. Um, I'd like to provide everyone with the opportunity to ask any questions they may have for Colonel Bob Stewart. If you have any, can you either use the chat function and we'll read out your question, 
or you can raise your hand and we will then read out your name to enable you to ask your question. Uh, first, we'll go to those who have their hands raised, James. Okay, do we have any questions on the chat function, James? Um, we have no questions, Shay. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Colonel Bob Stewart, um, thank you for your time, uh, for giving your time to speak to us today. If you would like to, you're very welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, uh, but if you need to leave, then uh, feel free to do so. But it'd be great if you could stay on, sir. Okay, I'll try. try. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next, I'd like to invite Councillor Angus Ross, the Armed Forces Champion for Berkshire Fire Authority, to talk about the work that's been happening across the service and what this initiative means to him as a veteran himself. Uh, thank you, Jay. Um, before my speech, may I just thank uh, Bob Stewart for that? <clears throat> because I think it was out of that sort of period came a lot of the organisations which are represented here today uh, and, and the great work that the successive um, times that the forces have been called uh, to, to arms since uh, that sort of time, which is just after I left the Air Force. Um, and it's a very different world now in how we support these people. So thank you again. Anyway, good afternoon, gen uh, everyone. Um, I'm so delighted that so many organizations have joined in with us today. I'm Councillor Angus Ross and been a member of the Fire Authority for the past 20 years. Well before I became a councillor, on leaving school I joined and served in the RAF for 20 years as a pilot, serving in the UK, Singapore and Germany, flying Canberra bombers and as a flying instructor on Jet Provost, as well as interesting but not as exciting ground tours. Now, this Armed Forces Veterans Hub will place our fire stations at the heart of our communities, providing a space for veterans and their families to come together. For me, personally, this is a very exciting scheme, and I'm very privileged to be part of it. In my role as Armed Forces Champion for Royal Berkshire Fire Authority, I've been heavily involved in the great work that's been done to support our Armed Forces community. Throughout the past few years, we've run and taken part in a number of events for our Armed Forces community. We're very proud to have taken part in and hosted the Tri-Service Open Day in conjunction with the Career Transition Partnership alongside South Central Ambulance Service and Thames Valley Police. This was a great opportunity to provide leaving members of the Armed Forces with guidance about transitioning into a career in one of the three emergency services and talk to some of our 30 plus veterans within Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Service. In addition to this, the service also has an excellent relationship with local armed forces and has supported the Open Health Day at Combermere Barracks, taking part in demonstrations and giving advice about career opportunities after leaving the armed forces. We've also attended many Remembrance Sunday parades across the years, including some members of the service attending the service at the Cenotaph. We've been privileged over the years to be able to work with local military to provide training for our firefighters and officers. Some of our officers were able to attend RAF Halton to take part in an innovative and state-of-the-art command course for operations middle managers. As well as this, casualty care instructors have attended Richfield Joint Defence Medical School to take part in Battlefield Advanced Trauma Life Support, which is a first for any fire and rescue service in the UK. The Physical Training Corps at Combermere Barracks have also been very generous offered to our team by inviting all of our senior physical education supervisors to attend a training day at the barracks to work collaboratively in ways to maintain fitness and well-being and exchange ideas and training methods. We plan to take this up as soon as practically possible, given the current necessary restrictions we are living under. In November 2019, the service was invited for the first ever Blue Light Forum hosted by the Reserve Forces and Cadets Association for Greater London, with the aim of establishing a military and blue light network in the south of England. This forum was the first of its kind in the UK, 
It was set up to identify more effective and efficient ways of working collaboratively in the future in light of the new statutory duty obligations. This network enables organizations to support each other through the sharing of experience and good practices, add value to the defense partnership and each other, and learn about how we can be rewarded through the Ministry of Defense's employer recognition scheme. As the chairman said earlier, we gained the gold standard this year, the first fire and rescue service to get it at the first attempt, some achievement. We've put a number of policies in place to ensure those who are still serving have an opportunity, which we encourage, to join the service. And we're pleased to say we also have a number of reservists within the service, which we mentioned earlier. These events and initiatives offer just a snapshot of some of the work that's been going on within the service over the last couple of years. This is all part of the service and fire authorities' continuous journey to support the armed forces within Berkshire and beyond and today's launch shows an extension and ongoing commitment to supporting our armed forces community. I've been extremely proud of the efforts to support our armed forces community so far, and this Armed Forces Veteran Hub is a continuation of our commitment and dedication to all those who have served. It's not the start of our journey to support members of the armed forces, as we've been committed to supporting them for a number of years now, but this Veterans Hub reaffirms our commitment and stem demonstrates our continued support. As a fire authority and a service, we'll continue to work towards ways to make ourselves open and accessible to all, and supporting the armed forces is a very important part of this. I very much look forward to talking and working with you all on future occasions. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Ross. I'd now like to invite some of the organisations present to say a few words about the work that they do and how they support our armed forces through the services they provide. When I read out your organisation's name, could you please unmute your microphone? First, I'd like to start with Brendan from Building Heroes. Thank you. <laughs> um, good afternoon uh, and thanks for the uh, invitation to this uh, to the launch of the Hub. It's uh, uh, an auspicious occasion, I'm sure. Um, for those of you who don't know us, Building Heroes is a charity um, dedicated to reskilling service leavers and veterans in basic construction skills and helping them fi uh, find uh, future employment in the construction industry. And um, along the way, uh, they gain three qualifications, including uh, the very important CSCS card, which enables them to work in the construction industry on site. We've been operating for just over six years now, and um, two weeks ago, we graduated our thousandth graduate, um, uh, a milestone of which we were very proud, and I was very humbled by, um, by that achievement. Um, we, we work very closely with major employers to, to, um, to create smooth transitions and pathways into the construction industry. Um, and we're, having started in house building, <clears throat> we're currently exploring expansion into road and rail, so into the civil engineering side of construction, which is also a very large uh, part of the construction industry. Um, we currently deliver at 12 centres around the country, sadly none in Royal Berkshire, but, um, but we are just across the M3 in Aldershot, delivering uh, in partnership with the Farnborough College of Technology um, in Aldershot College. And so obviously we would be accessible to any service leavers or veterans resident in, uh, in and around Berkshire. Um, it strikes me that this hub is a great idea because actually getting people together and getting services together and getting information about services out um, is how uh, the veteran community finds out about um, all of the different offerings that are available um, in Civvy Street um, particularly from the military charity sector uh, to help them in their um, either in their initial resettlement and transition into Civic Street, but also in um, <clears throat> for those who maybe don't make an early and easy transition um, and find themselves uncertain of what they want to do with their career. We um, we've trained veterans aged between 18 and 62 so far in our in our six years. 
um, some with services short as a month and others with um, 40 years of service. So, um, and some who've just left and others who left 20 years before they came to us. So it's a broad parish and, uh, and we're really pleased that, uh, that people can find us, but hubs um, and communication and sharing of information is critical because word of mouth referrals um, is where we get the bulk um, of our learners from. So hopefully by being part of this hub, we will, um, we will spread the word about building heroes. There is a world of opportunity in the construction industry for service leavers and veterans. There are enormous number of pathways, professional, technical, as well as trade and support through down which um, you, can put, you can travel on your way into the construction industry. And very importantly as well, we are open to the entire military family. So spouses and children of serving um, military personnel and veterans are entitled to come on our program and use our services to help them get new skills and find new, uh, find new opportunities. So I'd just like to say thanks again um, for inviting me along. Um, if, if, you, if you come across um, anybody in, in this community who you think could benefit from reskilling into construction, send them our way because all are welcome in exactly the same as, way as the Armed Forces Covenant states, if you've served one day, you can come to Building Heroes. So thanks for your time and thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to talk about what we do. And I'm happy to take any questions if anybody has any, um, or if you just need to find out where we are, find us on our website, um, buildingheroes.org.uk. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Brendan, thank you very much for your time. Um, if we move on to the next uh, subject, so if we talk to Dr. Karen Arnold from the Career Transition Partnership. Yes, hi, good afternoon, everybody. Well, well, first of all, well done for being here on Saturday afternoon. That's fantastic. Um, most of you probably have either heard of us or know me. Um, we are the Career Transition Partnership. Uh, we are the transition service on behalf of the Ministry of Defence for service leavers uh, through the RFEA, for veterans and uh, this week we launched our partners and spouses program so um, the offering by the CTP is open to try services all ranks all time served so um, you can be you can access our service whether you've been one day at one of our training establishments to whether you've done 33 years plus and even signed on as a reservist um, however long your um, service is. So it's a, it's a full offering. Um, our, my role is working with key employers, um, national accounts, and also accounts in the south of England to ensure that we uh, understand and work with employers to build pipeline of jobs and opportunities. And please, I can really assure you that the south of England at the moment is buoyant with jobs. Um, I currently have a portfolio of about 1,500 live roles myself um, in the south of England. Lots of opportunities in the defence sector. Um, and most of the key employers um, are working with the CTP. Now, these have been um, unprecedented times for us as well. Um, it's been very difficult for service leavers who were in the middle of transition. Very scary for them. Uh, we've moved to... Uh, lots of activities online, which have been very successful. We've so far run 11 virtual employment fairs with around about 200 service leavers on each event. In the next two weeks, we are running our first virtual cuddle the employer, I call it, but uh, employer event so that any employers that have signed up during this uh, difficult time and who doesn't, don't understand the full service that we offer, we'll be able to hear from our uh, client consultants, those that work on a day-to-day -day basis with our service leavers, from the team that will look after our wounded, injured and sick service leavers, to the people who help with our CV workshops. And from that, we're looking for employers to give you know, a two-way street because uh, CVs are always one of those contentious issues. Um, you will also be able to talk to our marketing team and our events team and our employment team. So if you don't get an invite um, from us and you'd like to attend that, if you could just uh, drop me a line, that would be fine and you'll get an invite to that event. 
our training is a lot much of our training has gone online where possible um and we've just extended that offering and that has also been very successful especially for some of our sort of cyber security and TIA courses so we've moved into the same platform as everybody else by trying to still to support um, you won't be surprised to know that our numbers of registrations from the veteran community is at an all-time high so our teams are extremely busy supporting uh, those veterans we're still seeing the same number of service leavers signing on those that are other um have just come out of the training and decided the military is not for them um i have the great advantage of having a son who's serving in the royal artillery um, who is a 22-year-old troop commander at Purbright. So um, I hear about all the stuff that's going in and what's about to be heading our way. Um, and we're also seeing, obviously, the natural attrition that comes out at the end of service. What that will look like in about um, 15 months' time, that will be quite interesting because, as you know, the military have been uh, signing people back on and there have been unprecedented numbers in people re-signing. So... The support from the CTP has continued. We're offering our live chats, virtual events, employment fairs all online, and the support has continued. And if anybody would like to know more about us, please do contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for your time. Um, I could pass on next to uh, Mr. Len Chapel from Force Online, please. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot to unmute the mic. I was just wondering if I could share the screen uh, from your system to mine. Is that possible? Yes, that's possible, yep. Okay, I'll just do that quickly then. Show me a second. It doesn't seem to be work. Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Len, and thanks for the invite today. I'm from Forces Online, and I served in the Armed Forces. I'm a Northern Ireland vet, having served in the 2nd Battalion of Royal Green Jackets. I am well known throughout uh, social media and online for helping veterans through the organization Forces Online, which I founded way back in 2013. We were one of the first organizations to recognize the power of social media and using it to network the UK to help veterans and their families wherever we can. So I'm getting messages from the screen here. We are easy to find on Google with our main keyword, which is Forces Online, where you can find our website, which is being created by an amateur team of veterans. So just Google Forces Online, you'll easily find us. A breakdown of our services and people can be found on PressKite, right? So I'm going to read you the URL. It's presskite.com forward slash press kit forward slash forces online CIO. This is now under development, so you'll see more being added to that. And this tells you about the organization in detail. The organization started as a contact system just to keep in touch with some mates and talk to veterans from other services. It has steadily grown into a formidable web service. As you can see, I'm displaying the website. I'm going to talk about the hub in a minute. I've left the hub icon on today just to show you where it is, but that hub is closed at the moment. It was first registered as a community interest company in February 2016, and, and this year it converted to charity status in April, uh, which was great. We now have the ability to contact and refer to other organizations as well as take uh, take referrals from them ourselves, which we do. We have developed seven several unique services, one of which is the Veterans Directory. 
uh, which is a signposting service. Uh, it's also UK wide. Here you can add your armed forces support organization for free, which will be listed in the main directory and can be added to any county search in the UK. The link to do this is forcesonline.org.uk forward slash veterans dash directory. The veterans directory app will, will be produced sometime in the future that will search organizations based on how near they are uh, to a mobile phone that using a phone. We've also, so I've added a few footnotes to myself. We've also been looking at the idea of adding the blue light services to the directory as well. So that's something for the future. We've got a friendship system. It's being used, but it's also currently in development as well. Our referral and tracking system is called the friendship system, which is our welfare project and comprises of a tracking database that can handle multi referrals and is being headed up by a qualified team with experience and backgrounds in NHS stroke therapy and counselling and social services. We believe that no one charity can handle everything all at the same time. And in the current armed forces situation, we have seen the rise of many social media groups, etc., where it is easy for veterans to slip through the net. We also think that other veterans do their rounds on many charitable groups which do not easily share records. The friendship system plays a part in identifying what is available in specific areas that we can use to enhance a veteran's life. So people like yourselves, we, you know, if we've got somebody in Berkshire, we can identi identify your hub and stuff like that. Virtual hub. Since April's registration and the rise of the coronavirus, we have been working in a COVID safe manner with the virtual hub, which is a Zoom based environment, very similar to what we're using today, easily accessible from a phone, computer, tablet or any other smart device. The hub can be accessed from the website on the top menu. There's a virtual hub tab or through forcesonline.org.uk forward slash virtual dash hub. Um, I've just purchased another URL today to be a little bit more specific with the virtual hub. You will be able to see on the page I've just given you the virtual hub opening times, which are slowly increasing. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we moved to Saturdays as well, which is really, really good. The hub is run by veterans to help veterans and has just been recognized by the Association of Service Drop-in Centers as Region 21. Region 21 is a virtual re region, and I have been appointed the regional coordinator for the virtual region, which is now UK wide. We have several other initi initiatives which can be accessed from the website, and we are still looking for people to help in a number of positions, particularly the hub interested people can email me direct at len.chapel at c-h-a-p-p-e-l-l -L, at forcesonline.org.uk or use our contact page where other members of the team are accessible for contact at forcesonline.org.uk forward slash contact dash us. Finally, I would like to say a few words about David, our Head of Legal and Contracts Department, who is one of our registered trustees. David has been busy campaigning for the welfare of the Commonwealth soldiers and has set up a campaign to raise £50,000 to help them fight the unfair and unjust costs of more than £10,000 per family to remain in the UK. Despite serving in the British Army with distinction, you can find out more about this on Facebook. Um, just put it, this is CAPS, so CAPS HTCV8, and Twitter, again, CAPS HTCV81, or the front page of Crowd Justice. 
and the team will be releasing a single in the next few days. David lives in Berkshire and is the Force's online coordinator, and he's here today. Thanks for that. Thank you very much, Len. Um, just to say, if anyone would like to share any materials or any um, email addresses, links to us after the meeting, we'll make sure that that gets to distributed to everyone within the meeting. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. OK, moving on then, we'll go to uh, Kate Ol from the Reserve Forces and Cadets Association. I think Kate was having um, a problem with her sound earlier. I'm not sure she can. I think she can hear, but I don't think she's able to speak at the moment. Okay. Whilst you're waiting, we'll move on to the next person. Then, if we move on to the uh, representative for the Royal British Legion, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Patricia Chadwick and I'm the Area Manager for the Royal British Legion, South East Midlands Region. I'm really, really pleased to be able to join the launch of the Hub today. And um, especially at the moment as we're in the midst of poppy appeal and remembrance, to be able to talk about the work of the Royal British Legion. Every year the Armed Forces and the public are enormously generous in the support that they offer to the Legion. However, for many people, the Royal British Legion is only known for the work that we do at this time of year around property appeal and remembrance, whereas our welfare work goes on for 365 days a year. The Royal British Legion is there to serve the armed forces community, whether there's a regular, a reservist, veteran or in service. And as so many other charities have noted, a beneficiary will only need to have completed one day's service in order to be eligible for Legion assistance. And our support continues to veterans and their families throughout their lives, long after their serving days might be over. Last year, over 90,000 people were provided with expert guidance and advice through one of our 16 pop-in centres. This year has been very different, as the lockdown in March has seen the closure of our pop-in centres, which will now not reopen until 2021. We have, however, continued to support the Armed Forces community through the web or over the phone. And our contact centre is open seven days a week. Some beneficiaries phoning will only need simple advice or information, whilst others need a higher level of support. Typically, if a household has multiple needs, for example, being in debt, needing help accessing statutory benefits, single repairs around the home, or a powered scooter to get out and about in the local area. For those more complex cases, most support is a coordinated, multi-agency approach that will see experienced Legion case officers putting together a package of care with the household for the household. Our approach as a charity is to do everything we can to ensure that we are not only helping with immediate needs, but contributing to a sustainable and stable foundation so that the household won't find themselves needing assistance again. But of course, if they do need assistance again, we will continue to help. For example, if someone needs to ride a recliner chair but doesn't have the means to pay for it, we will be able to provide an OT assessment and the chair for them. But sim similarly, we'll also look at their statutory benefits and try and maximise their income to ensure that we can help them to live more comfortably and independently. In the last financial year, we have helped 13,724 beneficiaries in the UK and overseas, with financial assistance spending of £9,056,697, and the biggest areas for assistance being mobility aids and equipment, housing, debt and brown goods. In Berkshire, we have assisted 108 beneficiaries with a spend of almost 65000 But we also have skilled teams within the Royal British Legion, including our War Pension and Forces Compensation Advisors, who have helped people access millions of pounds in Armed Forces and War Pension Compensation. We provide support to anyone going to a War Pensions Tribunal and can provide representation on the day and advice afterwards. 
We also provide housing and financial assistance to those most in need, keeping them off the street and helping them cope with debt problems. For example, we have 29 benefit and money advisors and we helped over 11,000 beneficiaries last year um, in benefit and money advice. We provide employment support. In the last financial year, we have supported almost 300 people with employment support grants worth £263,890 to fund trade in our education after leaving the armed forces and helping them into employment. And to be able to do that, we work closely with a number of partners to deliver employment support and advice, including the RFEA, Project Nova, and organisations such as Mission Motorsport to provide opportunities to veterans. As we've gone through COVID-19, the demand on our specialist teams has really increased, especially because many of our beneficiaries who come to us have both mental and physical health issues and have struggled to access the assessments and treatments that they need. Our independent living team supports beneficiaries or their dependents to live their lives as independently as possible, irrespective of any disability, impairment or caring responsibilities. And that service assists those seeking to access or retain a variety of aids and adaptations. Our Admiral Nurses and Mental Health Nurses specialise in, in dementia care. And the service aims to help family carers gain the necessary skills to assist those living with dementia and promote positive approaches um, to living well with that condition. And the assistance can greatly improve the person's quality of life, both for the carer and the sufferer. The service includes skilled assessments, emotional support, guidance and advice around what is available. We have an outreach service which again under COVID-19 has been in huge demand. At the moment we're having to look at resource to try and put as much of it as possible into outreach. The outreach service is there to help people with mental health issues, health and drug dependency, housing issues or at risk of homelessness. And as you'd expect, as we've gone across the COVID-19 restriction period, those who have got mental health issues have really, really struggled. And we're there to try and help plug them into the correct kinds of treatment. The demand for, for benefit and money advice has increased, as you would expect, um, in the current challenging times. We have households where one or both partners have been furloughed, so their income has been dramatically reduced. And unfortunately, some of those are now being made redundant. So some beneficiaries are having to um, access a complex benefit system for the very first time. And our BGM service are able to guide them around that and ensure that they receive their full benefit entitlements. We provide care homes. We have six care homes in the UK with more than 400 beds. And our homes include daycare and sector leading dementia units. Each puppy home is designed to be welcoming, but what it provides, which no other care home can provide, is that camaraderie and feeling of the military family, which is so important to those veterans who have served and now want to spend the rest of their days living comfortably, safe and content. I refer to the fact that this year has presented many challenges and I'm sure it has for all of you as well. We have many clients, not just the elderly, but certainly the elderly have been impacted with social isolation. And in the period from July this year to September, our telephone buddy service, which is offered by our local branches, has made up 12,111 calls to 5,081 beneficiaries. Like most people, we have found that all our plans for this year have had to change. So our poppy appeal... Um, as from Wednesday could no longer be face to face and tonight's Festival of Remembrance will not be in front of a live audience um, and tomorrow's Cenotaph service will certainly look very different as will local events but we are in the middle of a strategic review so we are changing and adapting to try and make sure that our resources are concentrated where they're needed most and that the continued support to our armed forces family will remain at the centre of what we do but I think most importantly is the recognition that we cannot do things alone. When I first joined the Legion, I was told that our mission was to be the number one military charity. And times have changed. And now we recognise that in order to be an efficient charity, we have to be able to work 
with others and in collaboration. And that's why um, the Veterans Hub and today is so important to me and I think to us all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. OK, next uh, speaker, if we ask uh, Mr Mike Hall, the representative from the Royal Hospital Chelsea, please. Yes, uh, good afternoon and thank you again for um, inviting me along. Um, a little bit on my background, uh, I was a gunner for over 22 years, leaving in 1986. And shortly after that, apart from the work I was doing, I joined SAFA as a caseworker and worked with them for over 10 years. And that is where I met uh, for the first time uh, Canon Peter Broombells, who we got to know quite well. And shortly after that, we formed the National Malaya and Borneo Veterans Association for Surrey. And we now meet at Clandon, which is near Guildford, and um, we support many things in Guildford, including when we found um, Pat Sheridan's uh, venture at Guildford Fire Station with his drop-in centre for the veterans. And we don't support that fully as a branch, but branch members go. And I've been several times uh, in my Scarlet's to support, um, is, which is something which is a very worthwhile uh, event and um, long may it continue. But the Chelsea pensioners, um, I think from the Royal Hospital Chelsea's point of view, the overriding message, though, with some 300 pensioners here at Royal Hospital Chelsea. But we aim, in partnership with other military charities and resources permitting, to offer comradeship to veterans in the community and to help bring a bit of friendly encouragement to people who may be experience isolation um, or loneliness. Um, in particular, uh, our plans here are to build on the success of our existing virtual chats to veterans, um, which is ongoing and working quite well. Um, to bless us uh, members, we do that, and to reach more veterans, perhaps through regiment associations. So we're reaching out um, to get to veterans if we can. When COVID safety permits, to make available some activities in our new activities and hobbies building to veterans in neighbouring boroughs. Uh, and that should be within 12 months, COVID permitting. We'd like to develop a number of rooms in our refurbished zone stable block, which can be used by agencies who provide support to veterans in the community and link the people attending those sessions with Chelsea pensioners if possible, and hopefully within two years. We'd like to start to develop links with and support for carers of veterans in the wider community information, advice, mutual support, and perhaps respite care uh, within three years. So we have a number of plans in the, in the pipeline, um, and one would hope that um, it will all come about. I'm sure it will. Um, the emphasis is on offering comradeship and friendly conversations, but signposting to other services if there's an unmet need. So we don't provide a lot of help, but we do know who can. This is in line with the uh, support that Chelsea pensioners have traditionally given to disabled, homeless and incarcerated veterans. And in fact, myself, I'm on a team that visit two London prisons and chat to veterans who are incarcerated there. As well as raising money in the poppy appeal for other veterans. We've started virtual meetings now, but the expansion of those and the development of the facilities on site for more interaction with veterans uh, in the community is dependent on our raising additional funds to do that and good partnership with other agencies. We've started both of those processes and are optimistic about the outcome. Um, if we have an ask, it's that fact that um, we are quite willing to chat to veterans online um, if they have a need and we're quite willing to don our scarlets and sit and chat to them if they so wish. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for your time, Mr. Hill. Much appreciated. Um, can I now ask uh, Pat Sheridan, representative from Surrey Fire and Rescue, please? Hello, and thank you for inviting me here today. Um, I was hoping my Chief Fire Officer, Steve Owen Hughes, was going to be here, but obviously he's otherwise engaged. Um, unlike my, uh, the distinguished guests here, I don't come from a, a military background. Um, but I did attend a uh, a meeting to become a um, a, a military veteran supporter, um, basically to enable me to sign uh, signpost uh, veterans if they needed help or or support in any way. From that, um, I took um, a keen interest in in the veterans. Um, my position in the Surrey Fire and Rescue is I'm station commander at Guildford Fire Station, which is the biggest fire station in Surrey. Um, we've got a lot of room, a lot of um, areas that we can use for um, supporting uh, ventures within the community, which we try and do as much as we can. I kind of figured that maybe um, we should look at maybe involving or inviting some veterans into the station uh, and see where we go from there. Um, the plan was to turn uh, Guildford Fire Station into a veterans hub, which it is now. And so on the last Thursday of the month, uh, veterans drop in, uh, have a bacon roll and a, and a coffee and a chat for a couple of hours and talk to, to like-minded other veterans. It started off with um, two veterans turned up um, and questions were asked, is this something that we want to continue with? To which I said, if two veterans turn up, it's two more than we've had contact with. So definitely yes. And then the biggest group we've had is 45 turned up, which was a bit of a shock, but we actually we managed to, to, to fit them all in. So my, my, my concern, if, if I'm being honest, is um, we, we have a regular group of veterans that turn up, which is absolutely brilliant. And they fought in different theatres of war from uh, Burma to the Falklands to Afghan and Iraq and over at Northern Ireland as well. So we give them a, a, a chance to have a chat and conversation and we give them a bacon roll. Absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really happy with that. My issue is I'm, I really need to get to the veterans who who we can't contact. So the guys who are sleeping rough uh, and the guys who are really struggling or the guys who are alone, um, because predominantly that's kind of where I was looking at before we, we set the whole thing up. Um, we are gradually trying to make contact with these guys who are on the streets. Um, uh, like Mike said, guys in the prison, um, because they need our support, because the, as far as I'm concerned, they've done their duty and, and we need support. I know I'm, I'm speaking to the converter here, um, we also provide uh, Guildford Fire Station as a safe haven. So if we have a veteran that is being persecuted, in trouble, needs help, they can knock on our door any time of the day, 24-7. They can come in, we'll make it a safe haven, and we'll give them whatever support they need, whether it's um, using the police, ambulance, or, or just somewhere to stay. Um, my, uh, I have had contact with um, Superdrug, so not only do we talk about providing um, bacon rolls and stuff like that, if a veteran pops in and needs a shower or a shave, I've been giving shower, shower um, kits and shave kits. They can have a shower and a shave. Um, at some point, we want to uh, store clothing as well and provide clothing if that's something that they need. Um, a hub for me is not just about tea and coffee and a bacon roll. It's the whole picture um, and whatever they, our veterans need. Um, We've also got uh, some stations in Surrey who are who are going to be other uh, veterans hubs. So we have a, a station called Woking and we have a station called um, Fourbridge. Um, within all the stations in Surrey, we want to create gardens, um, basically welfare gardens. And initially, they were welfare gardens for for firefighters who were struggling, but we've now kind of um, joined in with the veterans and said so. Military veterans can come and use our gardens if they want to relax, have a talk, have a coffee. Um, we're also inviting them to get involved in when we're actually uh, installing the gardens, if they want to come and help create the gardens and do some of the work with us, then obviously it gives them a bit of purpose and it also gives them ownership as well. So once the gardens are created, it, it's theirs as well. Um, it's a real honor to be involved with the veterans. Um, I know my chief fire officer, Steve Owen Hughes, he's a, he's a military guy himself. He's a driving force behind uh, sorry, Fire and Rescue having most of the stations being veterans hubs and most, if not all, the stations having these gardens of support. 
Um, I know he's also driving the um, uh, uh, the idea through the National Fire Chiefs Council, which he's a member of. So it's brilliant uh, to be involved, guys. Thank you very much for inviting me today. And Berkshire, you look like you're going to go from strength to strength, and it can only be a benefit for the veterans in your area. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pat. And and lastly, you speak to um, Ella from the from Safa, please. Good afternoon. In the way of introduction, I'm Ella, I'm the branch coordinator for Safa Berkshire, and I'm here to just share a bit about our organisation. And uh, by the looks of it, there are a number of people in here already know about us. So. Bear with me if you know it all already. Um, we are SAFA, the oldest military charity in the UK. Sir James Gilday, a British Army militia officer, founded the Soldiers and Sailors Association in 1885. We became the Soldiers, Sailors and Airmen's Families Association, SAFA, in 1919. Our volunteer network reaches into every county of the UK, as well as 11 countries abroad. Activities are coordinated from our central office, as well as our regional teams and committees. So who do we support? Well, we support regulars and reserves in the Royal Navy, the Royal Marines, the British Army and the Royal Air Force and their families. They are entitled to lifelong support. And how do we support? Well, we help the armed forces community in a number of ways with a focus on providing direct support to individuals need a physical or emotional care. Addiction, relationship breakdown, debt, homelessness, PTSD, depression and disabilities are all issues that affect serving members of our armed forces as well as veterans. SAFA also offers services such as adoption services. We support veterans uh, in the criminal justice system and a number of other initiatives um, run by SAFA. Closer to home and what we do here in Berkshire and how we operate. In Berkshire, we have four divisions, Reading, Windsor Maidenhead and Slough, West Berkshire and Wokingham and Bracknell. Our team consists of 18 caseworkers, four treasurers and headed up by our chairman, retired Air Commodore Barry Dickens. We're also very proud to support our Gurkha community and uh, we run a Gurkha Ladies English Language Teaching Initiative. So to give you an example of some of the kinds of assistance that we've provided, um, we've supplied white goods and furniture for families in need. We've arranged respite care. We've assisted with debt management and housing support and advice. And I'll give you one or two uh, quick case examples. We recently assisted a triple amputee veteran who served in Afghanistan to raise funds for a home gym as due to the uh, pandemic, he was unable to utilize his usual facilities. In another case, we assisted a veteran of the rifles with children, one of whom is uh, terminally ill and, uh, and rather ill at that. And because of the amount of time that he and his partner had to take off to look after the children, uh, their debts, uh, rent arrears built up, and so did their essential debts, and they were facing the threat of eviction. Our caseworker worked closely with them to sort out the immediate financial needs and arranged for debt advice and financial planning. SAFA works in partnership with other military charities and organisations to ensure that our serving members and veterans in need of help receive the support they need and deserve. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Ella, for your time. Um, can we just try once more with uh, Kate Lowell from the Reserve Forces and Cadet Association, please? Good afternoon. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can, Kate, yep. Lovely, lovely. Well, I'd like to first congratulate you on the launch of the Hub. Great achievement, and thank you very much for inviting me this afternoon. Um, so my name is Kate Lowell. I'm one of three regional employer engagement directors working uh, for South East Reserve Forces and Cadets Association and providing a point of contact between employers and the community with the MOD. So in the UK, we have 13 regional RSCAs um, and South East have an office in Aldershot and one in Maidstone in Kent. Um, and that's where we're in association where we promote and support our 21,000 cadets 
and our 4,000 cadet force adult volunteers and roughly 40,000 reservists. So when I talk about um, the South East, I'm meaning um, we're based in Oxfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Berkshire, Surrey, Kent, Western East Sussex, Isle of Wight and Hampshire. So it's a, it's a big area. Um, so now with the name of South East Reserve Forces and Cadets Association, and you're probably sitting there thinking, well, what does that mean for veterans or for former armed forces personnel, as some prefer to be known? So our organisation delivers three very important roles. Firstly, we promote and advocate to society the role of reserves and cadets. Secondly, we look after the upkeep of the 28 reserve centres and over 550 cadet huts, training centres, ranges and caretakers properties. And we employ the Army Cadet Professional Staff and Recruitment of the Adult Instructors. So there's quite a lot going on there. And thirdly, um, we have a small employer engagement cell which promotes the Armed Forces Covenant to businesses, organisations and charities and encourages those who pledge their support to be recognised with a bronze, silver or gold employer recognition award. And I was absolutely delighted to have supported Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Service this year with their um, successful gold nomination. So another congratulations to you. Um, so you're probably still sitting there thinking, well, that's all very well and good, but um, how does that help veterans? So I thought it might be helpful if I gave you some examples. So our estates department regularly have requests to assist with making adaptations for wounded, injured and sick properties to make veterans' lives easier. Um, that could be anything from a ramp or a lift installation or to something larger. And partly the reason we, why we do that is we're quite a flexible workforce, um, so it's something we can do relatively simply. Um, Secondly, um, our employer engagement team work with businesses and organisations of all sizes and all sectors to make them what we call armed forces friendly and encourage them to sign the armed forces covenant. Um, the covenant, hopefully most people will know, is a document where pledges are made to support the armed forces community, that's veterans, regular and reserve personnel and their families and cadet force adult volunteers and the cadets themselves. Um, to date, in the South East, over 750 businesses and organisations have signed the Armed Forces Covenant and pledges often include ones which support veterans. So working with CTP, CTP Career Transition Partnership, Karen, who you've already spoken with this afternoon, and Forces Families Jobs, um, we, they understand the transferable skills military personnel bring to the workplace and offer jobs to veterans, transitioning service personnel and their spouses and partners. Um, sometimes they provide guaranteed interviews for veterans and those transitioning, as long as they meet the role criteria. Sometimes they offer work experience to veterans and those transitioning. Um, perhaps they set up a buddy scheme for new veteran starters to make them feel supported and welcome in the early months of being back in City Street. And they provide support to military charities with fundraising and volunteer days. And they usually support the Armed Forces Days in June and Remembrance Day with things like social media and activities with their staff on those days. Um, for those in retail, quite often they offer a discount to the Armed Forces family. Other support the RSCAs provide to veterans and their spouses, partners include the work we undertake as part of the Local Authority Armed Forces, and Armed Forces Covenant Boards. And also we sit on several organisations, internal Armed Forces steering groups. So that's a whirlwind of quickly what we do and how we do and a little bit of how we um, help indirectly with um, veterans. Um, so if you do have um, any organisations and businesses who might be interested in getting involved in signing the Armed Forces Covenant, um, perhaps you could send them my way and um, we'll speak to them. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for uh, your chat. Thank you very much, much appreciated. Um, and thank you all for your contributions. I hope this has given everyone a flavour of the wide variety of support and opportunities we can offer uh, through this Armed Forces Veterans Hub. We hope this hub will continue to provide further opportunities for everyone to get to know each other and network as the events progress. So I'd now like to uh, quickly, if possible, if anyone wants to ask any questions, open up the meeting uh, for all of you to ask any questions about the initiative. Um, if you have any, you can either use the chat function or and we'll read out your question, or you can raise your hand and we'll take we'll read out your name uh, and able to ask questions. Does anybody have any questions about the uh, initiative we are starting here in Berkshire? Yeah, Chairman, Chairman Dudley? Yeah, thanks, Shay. It's it's just a general comment, really. It seems to me that um, yeah, all of the things that we've been hearing here today have been absolutely fantastic. 
and and the support that uh, are there for veterans, you know, right across well, our great country, really, um, but especially around here in Berkshire is is excellent. Um, I'm just thinking, um, and it's kind of a question to my team in Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Service, um, that we should set up a perhaps a veterans hub section on our website so that that becomes that becomes a, a central part for for the Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Service Veterans Hub efforts. Um, if anybody's got any comments on that. Uh, yes, Chairman, we'll definitely take that uh, forward as an action point from this meeting to uh, look into further outside this meeting. OK, so if there's no other questions, um, if you have any further questions you'd like to ask, please email them to communications at rbfrs.co.uk and we'll get back to you some answers. Um, I'd now like to hand over to Chief Fire Officer Trevor Ferguson, uh, who is going to close the uh, meeting for us. Thank you, Shay, uh, and a big thank you to everyone for giving up your time today to make the launch of the Veterans Hub such a success. Uh, and a special word of thanks to our distinguished guests and speakers, James Sunderland, um, our MP for Bracknell, the Chairman of the Fire Authority, Councillor Colin Dudley, and our Armed Forces Champion, Angus Ross. Um, I'd particularly like to thank Colonel Bob Stewart, and I'm glad the Colonel is still here with us. I'm sure you'll have picked up from the accent, Colonel Bob. Uh, I didn't grow up too far away from the drop-in well. Uh, and I was the young 11-year-old boy driving past as you shared your memories. It was a, a very traumatic time uh, and it certainly was very, very moving today. So thank you for sharing with that. I, th I thought it added an awful lot to today's meeting. Uh, it would also be remiss of me not to place on record my thanks to Shea and the team. Uh, as always, their hard work in putting these events together has been excellent. Uh, and with the various additional challenges of COVID-19, I know that plans were being tweaked uh, right up to yesterday and today. So uh, really well done to everyone for a great event. Uh, over the past few years, we've been working very hard to place our fire stations and indeed our service uh, at the heart of our communities. And we are immensely proud of the work that we've been doing to build closer links with our armed forces community. And today signals another positive step in that journey. We all owe a huge debt to our veterans and indeed their families. And I am confident that they will find a warm welcome and generous support when they visit our stations in person. And if that welcome and support repays even a tiny proportion of the debt we all owe them, then our veterans hubs will have been a significant success. So finally, before we close on this, the Eve of Remembrance Sunday, I thought we should all take this opportunity to look back and remember. 100 years ago tonight, on the 7th of November, on the Western Front, the body of the unknown warrior was exhumed from an unmarked grave. His remains were subsequently placed and transported on HSM, HMS Verdum to Dover before being buried at the end of the nave in Westminster Abbey at 11 o'clock on Arms this day, 1920. I therefore believe it is very fitting that today, again on the 7th of November, we continue to remember not just those who served in the Great War, but all those who served. So thank you all for joining us. Please stay safe in these challenging times. And I do look forward to seeing you all in person when we can physically meet at one of our veterans hubs. Thank you very much for your time and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Trevor, for your time. Um, and thank you everyone for joining our launch event today. We were delighted to be able to host this launch meeting on such a pivotal weekend in the armed forces community and beyond. We'll provide result details of the next event in due course. And that concludes the Armed Forces Veterans Hub launch event. I'd like to thank you all once again for your time.